Hi, I'm George Chauncey, and I'm a professor of 20th century American history at Columbia University. Much of my research, writing, and even teaching for the last 40 years has been concerned with the history of LGBTQ people in the 20th century. George has a unique ability to place LGBTQ history at the very center of American history. He has used what he has learned to change the law, to change the way we think about things, to change the way we think about the past. Um, Chauncey's work gives us um, that story that we need to tell um, about ourselves so that we can be our better selves. Dr. Chauncey's work over the decades has helped the nation move closer to its ideals and away from its discriminations. The petitioners are entitled to respect for their private lives. The state cannot demean their existence or control their destiny by making their private sexual conduct a crime. Their right to liberty under the Due Process Clause gives them the full right to engage in their conduct without intervention of the government. It is the promise of the Constitution that there is a realm of personal liberty which the government may not enter. My father was a Presbyterian minister who was involved in the Civil Rights Movement and, shall we say, was asked to leave a couple of churches along the way. Uh, so I lived in Tennessee, Arkansas, Georgia, Kentucky, and Virginia. The minute I saw George, it was immediate. I, I realized I was in love. <laughs> Within a few weeks, he moved in with me in Chicago, and that was 20 years ago. If I merely had your question in desire, or if I only had the yearnings of a fan, in me you must... Be One of the most unexpected findings of my research for many people, including myself, was that there was a really vibrant, extensive and often quite visible gay world in American cities, certainly in New York, in the early 20th century. Because I just went gay all of a sudden. My name is Jason Holliday. <laughs> My name is Aaron Payne. His book, Gay New York came out in 1994, my first year teaching. And I thought that was one of the most exciting ways of doing legal history that I'd ever seen. He brought gender and sexuality into the story. By the time that George arrived at Columbia, it had been very clear for two decades that he was one of the finest historians of his generation. This is a history that's really unexpected. And I think it's important for people to realize that LGBTQ history is not just a history of policing, isolation, shame, and despair. There's also an enormous amount of resistance to that policing, and also many people who found ways to find joy and build a rich social life. Um, you simply can't underestimate the significance of the court um, ruling that gay couples, gay married couples, should be treated the same as heterosexual married couples. So I've testified in court, been deposed, submitted affidavits and amicus briefs in cases including Lawrence v. Texas, which overturned the nation's remaining sodomy laws, Windsor, which invalidated the Defense of Marriage Act, and Obergefell, which established the right of gay couples to marry nationwide. The decision whether and whom to marry is among life's momentous acts of self-definition. This is true for all persons, whatever their sexual orientation. The court now holds that same-sex couples may exercise the fundamental right to marry in all states. No longer may this liberty be denied to them. The Kluge Chair is an extraordinary opportunity. We're looking forward to working with Dr. Chauncey on a series of public programs drawing on his research. The overall theme will be through history to equality. His students and the students that come after them have his model for how to be an American, how to be a citizen. And it is not by leaning back and basking in the fantasy that we've figured it all out. Instead, it's about rolling up your sleeves and doing the work that's in front of you.